All right, both are rolling. Sweet, let's do it. So, uh, what's up guys? Welcome to the first episode of the Junk Drawer Show. Um, we're gonna just be a show about whatever the hell we wanna be a show about, and... Uh, we don't like labels. No, labels, labels frighten us. We're like skittish, skittish children. Don't like labels. Uh, my name's Pat. I'm gonna be the host, moderator most weeks, guest other times. Josh uh, Delgado, the man to my left, is going to be moderating occasionally as well. So uh, yeah, Josh, how about you introduce yourself? Uh, blah, 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 tits. I wrote that. That's the yeah. thing that it is written. I'm very good at my lines. In our, in our outline, that is actually what I wrote because I don't know what, I don't want to tell Josh what to say. But um, you still did. But I, so. but I did. I wrote Josh, blah, 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 tits. And uh, you did that. So that, yeah. I think that's a microcosm of, of us as people. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a very literal person because uh, I think it's funny. So that's really satire has uh, definitely played a big part in my life. Satirical humor, and and I mean, I grew up in a house where we watched a lot of Mel Brooks movies and and Monty Python, Holy Grail, and stuff. So like that kind of humor, I feel like plays a part in who I am as a person. Yeah. Hence, blah 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 tits. <laughs> and I feel like you're roughly the same. Yeah, which is funny because it didn't really come from my parents. Your parents weren't overly. No, like my mom didn't. She's not a huge movie person in general, and my dad likes movies, but. Hit the movies I got from him were like Planet of the Apes and Fight Club and Matrix. So like good movies. But, yeah, no, great movies. But, but not not a lot of humor in, yeah. in Fight Club. Like there is, but it's like, oh no. Yeah. Beat the hell out of Jared Leto. Okay. All right. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. So a lot of it honestly came from Mike, which is and his family, which is funny because that's also like how that's, we met. Yeah, we're definitely gonna get into into more of that in a second. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna give you guys a brief rundown of what the uh, the junk drawer show is going to be for us and 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 um, hopefully for future listeners. So I'm Pat, uh, originally from New Jersey, and I moved here to go to film school at Full Sail University. And uh, you know, I've I've kind of lost my way from that a little bit, and this is me trying to get back on track with it. And uh, this is a creative outlet, I feel like, for both of us to just kind of try something and see where we end up. And, uh, and you know, Josh is, has expressed interest and he's uh, been very supportive creatively. And, and he's kind of like, we're on the same page. We watch the same things. We, we want to get a conversation started. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, that's just kind of what I envision this being. So I don't know what your, your thoughts are or what you, how you feel about it. Yeah, no, I pretty much the same. Um, my name is Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. <laughs> um, I pretty much lived in Florida since I was nine. I was nine. So before that, I moved around a lot. But I think officially I'm a Florida guy, which is not a title I, I love. It's not great. But I have it, and I got to wear it with pride. Yeah. So I went to uh, Central Florida, University of Central Florida, bounced around a lot, started in film, and then moved like psychology and business and game design, and finally landed on web design and development, which is what I do now. And I just also like videos and making stuff. So that's what this is. Well, if I can play moderator for a second. Please um, do. I'm going to do it. This is my first foray into moderating, just so everybody knows. I've never (laughs) done this before. But um, you now take little bits of everything that you were were once involved with in college and now kind of do it in your own in, in your own way, right? You, yeah. you have your own business. You still do want to do film things. You still want to do, you know, and you do look at things in a somewhat psychological way and, and are intrigued by people's reactions and the way that people operate and stuff. And that's kind of what we're going to get into. into this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm always, I'm a very uh, curious guy. So I just, I'm always trying to learn as much as I can. Well, and that's something I, I feel like I'm going to say a lot is, is, you know, knowledge is power. Real and quick. What, watch the elbow. Cause you're shaking the, oh. Yeah. I feel like uh, something I'll say a lot too is is knowledge is power because mm-hmm. I do feel like in today's day and age when everybody has a a, a supercomputer in their pocket, um, you know, the more you can you know and you can prove beyond the shadow of a doubt is you know the better off you're going to be. Yeah, moving forward. And it's I know this is not the uh, intended topic for this, but the whole idea of having a, the entire internet at your disposal is getting us closer and closer to a hive mind because no longer do we really need to know facts. It's it's more about how we apply and synthesize facts. Yeah. So like uh, we're recording on the phone, we're, but the yeah. phone is access to all information. So yeah, it's, it's kind of shifting what's important. 
Yeah, it definitely. Know? And it, the thing is, you can you can kind of tell, and it's it. I mean, even for me as as someone who didn't always have a cell phone, you, we grew up in the same time. You know, I didn't have a, a computer in my house until I believe like the fifth grade, sixth grade. We had the dial up yeah. internet, so it was slow, and you couldn't talk on the phone if you had dial up. But like everything was prioritized differently. Like I was like, mom, how do you spell this? And she would go get, you know, go get a dictionary. Yeah. I've not heard that sentence uttered to anyone in a, um, probably a decade. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you just Google it. You're like, and I don't, my word today was unnecessary. I could not for the, I was like, spell unnecessary. And I just kept, and I was like, you know what? Just going to auto correct it. And I went into my phone. I went, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. That's how you spell unnecessary. And I forgot immediately after I spelled it. Yeah. And that's just like, that's bad. I haven't been able to spell unnecessary um, ever. <laughs> so I either do the autocorrect or I started using Siri a lot because oh. my wrist. So I started uh, speech to text a yeah. lot and I just say the word. I don't have to spell it. It's great. <laughs> she spells it for you. Thanks. That's Siri. All right. <laughs> One for you. <laughs> Pour one out for Siri. Um, so that is a, that, that's our brief for you about us, but um, I'm going to kind of let you take, take the reins on uh, how, we, how we came to meet because it is mostly through Mike's Blaine, who you've known longer than I, yeah. um, but, and I'll, I'll jump in occasionally, but how, uh, how, did we, how did we come to be where we are now, the Junk Drawer Show? Wow. Well... Four score and okay, it was five years ago. It was, it was five just years. five years ago. Oh, my seven, but so close. So, we just held out. I know two more years. But uh, I've been one of my best friends. I, I feel, keep wanting to look into. This I know thing. it's it's a weird. I want to turn and look too. And yeah, not, we'll we'll learn. We'll but one of my best friends uh, since the ninth grade is Mike Spillane, and uh, was it through the worst of friends or just because you guys were roommates that we met? Uh, I believe it was first through roommates and then worst of friends came shortly thereafter. And it was like, Oh my God, Josh would be great for this. Yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah. So Mike's been one of my best friends for 12 years now. And he, after our freshman year, when we moved, lived together, he then moved in with Pat and Gabe. Gabe. So they all lived together and I was living on campus and didn't like living on campus. You did not like living on campus. So I left, and I would come hang out, and then we became friends. And then we held hands, and sometimes we touched ears. Ears was code for penis. Yeah, well, that, but, that, but that's it. That's it. That's, that's we, all that happened. It was only docking, and that's it. Sometimes yeah. a sword fight, but then we don't... But that was really just a uh, to assert dominance. Yeah, that was... And Josh's wiener is way better than mine. So. <laughs> um, yeah, and Worst of Friends is something hopefully we'll be able to... to bring back to a different degree because we wrote it when it was written we were in college and we were like let's write it from a college kids perspective and now we are not in college we are post-college post-college real world uh bills are a real thing now as compo- as a compared to college where it was more of like a man we're gonna have to pay these back at some point <laughs> it's like now is when we pay them back yeah it's not great so but um yeah i mean that's just kind of where we got started with this and uh we, Oh, I don't think we actually said what Worst of Friends was. Oh, no. We, but we, Worst we, of Friends is, it's a classic odd couple. You know, you have the, the very messy guy and then the very neat, tidy guy. Um, I was the neat, tidy guy. He was the messy guy. I was the messy guy. And I think we filmed a couple test shoots. We, we, de- we did some test footage that is still floating around in the ether. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's out there. It's not uh, the best of quality, but it was... <laughs> It was fun, and I honestly, that's one of the things I had uh, writing. I had the most fun writing just because I, it was it was fun, and it was just you know the three of us kind of sitting around a table and yeah, saying just, stuff. Yeah, it was, and there was alcohol sometimes. What? <laughs> what? No, underage. There's, there's not a or, bottle of Jack in the kitchen right now. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> this will uh, at some point be the drunk drawer show just so everybody knows um we are going to bring drinking into this at some point and just see how yeah. the wheels fall off mostly because i have a very hard, very hard time saying junk drawer you and not it, saying drunk drawer literally yesterday all day josh was like junk drawer drunk drawer shit <laughs> I, it was a process it's yeah. a problem we're gonna get there we're gonna get yeah. there step step by step we don't have day. a logo yet and until we have a logo it's not even something it's just gonna be a square with a little handle it's gonna be a handle maybe a big black dildo which well is, yeah i thought that was 
without being said. That was something in a text thread that Josh and I were talking about. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, this is that's how we met. Uh, Worst of Friends was was kind of our our leaping off point, and it was actually the funny thing is it was about two roommates um, that you know just kind of butted heads and stuff, and and Josh and I now live together, which was completely unplanned. But um, it worked out kind of perfectly. And now, you know, we're looking into doing this, which is, as we've said, the Junk Drawer Show. We're going to try and be a bi-weekly podcast. Um, subscribe. <laughs> with us. You know, be, you know, share it with your friends. Tell your mom. And your dad. And your dad. Mostly your dad. A- no, don't yo- tell your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck dads. Dads are dumb. God, yeah. Dads. Next week on the show, we have my dad friend, Tyler. <laughs> he has a child. Oh, a little, little two-year-old. Little two-year-old. That's going to be a, that'll be a good one. Yeah. But um, no, that's, that's where we're at. We're going to try to do this junk drawer show. And uh, I mean, I know what I envision it being, but I feel like you are better at words than me. So I'll kind of let you... Oh, I appreciate that. People. You're wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> I am bad at words. But junk drawer. <laughs> but for me, I, I just see it as a as just anything. We'll talk about whatever's going on. If one of us comes across something that we we think is interesting, we talk about it, bring people on. Um, it's gonna start with mostly people we know. Uh, but I know I wanna move into businesses and other you know, people we'd like to know, you know. Why? I got no examples, but you know, I mean, I'd love to do. I'd love to do, for example, something that I and I'm a little bit more sports oriented than you. Something I'd love to do is talk to you know the mayor. You know, I'd love yeah. to talk to the mayor about you know a, a pulse was something that that affected. I feel like everyone in the city, whether you know, regardless mm-hmm. of your stance on things, I feel like that that feeling of you know it could never happen to me, and then it it happened to to friends friends of friends aunts uncles dads you know sisters yeah. mom like it just everyone it, was affected it in was, some way you felt the and and this is for you know our listeners will obviously at the first be predominantly or you know floridian orlando based it you felt it like the next day when you woke up it felt like everybody recoiled a little bit and was mm-hmm. like what just happened and unfortunately <laughs> Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem. I was in New Jersey when September 11th happened, Mm -hmm. which was just, you know, four hours up the road, three hours, three and a half hours up the road for me. And it was a very similar feel. Like everyone just kind of took a step back and was like, what just happened? Yeah. And, you know, I'd love to talk to him about that. I'd love to talk to, you know, Orlando City about how they support the community and things that they do. Did you did you know anyone who was like directly affected um by the towers? Direct I had my uncle Nate was a, a police officer in New York. Mm-hmm. Um and he was a, a first responder, which was insane. Yeah. Uh, his wife bet. said that he came back and was just head to toe, soot, mm-hmm. like unrecognizable. Uh, my other uncle uh, my uncle Anthony was in a tower, uh, away like from the tower. He was mm-hmm. he was a ways away, but he was like, "Man, that plane's flying really low." Oh shit! What? And then same. This is all in the same family. My uncle Joey is um, <clears throat> he was in the military, just just retired. Mm-hmm. Super happy about that. But he was uh, he was sent to Afghanistan mm-hmm. as soon like shortly thereafter. All that stuff happened. So it was it was a, a wild and crazy couple of days into months into what eventually became years for my uncle who was, you know served in the military was was sent out a few times to yeah. Afghanistan Iraq had gone a few different places so it was crazy for my family and I but um, I mean everybody's still good and alive and, yeah and, you know knock on wood and everything but um, yeah I mean from from someone who's never been in experienced something like that before and that degree like so close to home having been in Florida since you were nine mm-hmm. how did that uh, change your perspective of, of things how did that you know for a, a terrorist we call it a terrorist attack but it was someone you know in the community uh, basically attacking a different community because right. of how they were how did that change your view on things I don't I don't really know because it it was so young that it just feels like I've always been it's always been a post 9-11 world for me, you know? I mean, I do remember the day that it happened. Um, they started pulling in TVs on those old CRT monitors, oh, yeah. pulled those in, and they were showing it on the on the TV. And my mom picked me up just because that's what a lot of people were doing, were picking up their kids. 
And my first question was like, are we going up there? Because I didn't understand why I was getting pulled out of school. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have anyone directly there. Like my, I have family in New York and mm. I have family in Pennsylvania, but the closest is upstate New York and they're like four hours away. Yeah. It's not um, super close. So, and, and I've lived in New York um, within the past like three or four years. So that's the New York I know. Mm-hmm. I didn't have as much before. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I, to, to actually answer your question, I don't, I don't feel like there was a huge profound change. It was just, it, I've always been in this world. Yeah. It, it's you just know? some, it was validating kind of your feelings already. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that's, it, it was, that's crazy that you say like they were wheeling and see, you know, those big TVs and stuff because my school and we were, you know, by, by just distance closer than, than you by a substantial margin. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't tell us anything. I was in fifth grade. I remember when it happened with, we went along with the school day as, as usual. Yeah. And then I think we had like a half day and our parents came and picked us up and everything. Mm-hmm. But they didn't tell us anything. They didn't tell us as fifth graders. And we're, I mean, at fifth grade, you're, you understand things. You're, you know, you're 10. Dutch. Yeah. You're 10. You get how the world <laughs> works. You're like gas prices. Shit. I mean, Ash went to go collect Pokemon, catch all the Pokemon. Yeah, Wasn't he 10? He was, he was 10 or 11. He was 10. And his mom was like, yeah, you'll be fine by yourself. Yeah. What? Go talk to that strange man over there. <laughs> He's going to give you something. Yeah. What? They tell you not to do that. Not in Kanto. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, they didn't tell us anything. And that was, that was um, honestly, the first time I ever stood up to an adult was when, I, uh, when that happened. Uh, my dad picked me up. And we went to his sisters who owned a Dairy Queen in North Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And we went there and we were in the back and they were all watching on the TV. And she was like, go play with your cousin and your brother out back and the dog and stuff. Like, go, go play outside. And I did at first. And then everybody like didn't move. Like you could see inside the, the back of the Dairy Queen and, and nobody was moving. Everybody was kind of congregated around the TV. And I was just like, man, what's going on? Like, I want to watch the TV too. Yeah. So I like walked in and I looked up and they were like, go outside. And I like looked at my aunt and I was like, no, I want to know what's happening. So I turned around and I like just sat and watched and it was, it was insane. Like it, I couldn't believe you could see the smoke over the ocean where mm-hmm. I was at. So like if you looked out, you could just see and it was. Oh, you could see it like in person. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, it was faint and it was in the distance. But, but still. Like, yeah, you could because we're, we're on the, the ocean, you can kind of see mm-hmm. stuff. And it was it was crazy. It was it was a little nuts. Like I was concerned because, I mean, nobody knew what was really going on. Yeah. And this is so weird that this is the turn that it took. Like we went to from like, yeah, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be this stuff. And now we're like. Terrorism. <laughs> this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, as far, it's intense. This was supposed to be a, an introductory episode. We're already getting into it. This now. is turning into a real episode now. It really is. This isn't episode zero anymore. This is episode half. 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 0.5. But on, uh, on the note of 9 11, one of the most powerful, I don't know what to, exhibits or anything mm-hmm. I've ever been to was at the museum in uh, Washington, D.C. They have this whole section for, for um, 9-11. And I've never like teared up or felt like crying from watching uh, a, not even a documentary. It was like a five-minute reel. Yeah. Um, and just, but seeing that with pieces of the tower and everything around it like it was heavy. Yeah. I I've, I've have friends and uh, Megan who will, my, my girlfriend, and who will be on future podcasts. Um, she got to go to the... And it was only for a little bit. Her family visited New York, and um, they got to go to the museum that's mm-hmm. there for for the towers. And she said it's like one of the eeriest things, but it's beautiful and it's amazing. But it's also like it's it's a little earth shattering to to relive that and and understand like what happened. Like it's it's basically a refresher. It drops you right back into that moment. Mm-hmm. But now to see it as not a ten year old, not she was, I think, eight, seven or eight yeah. when it happened. Like you're, you're bringing all of that emotion back, but as a, a, an adult that is capable of feeling and understanding, like the gravity behind that situation. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put how I was feeling with it. Yeah, I mean, you can't process at that age. Like as much as we joke around, like Ash went to go catch Pokemon <laughs> when he was ten. Like it, at ten years old, you were like, "Oh man, this is crazy. Oh, we're going to war. Like, yeah, kill those guys. Like, yeah." But as an adult, you're like, "No." Actually, 
as a kid, I felt bad because I remember like a year or a couple months before we had been learning about, I want to say it was the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I wonder what it's like to be in a war. And then it happened. I'm like, shit, what the fuck did I do? You're a wizard, Josh. Yeah, I, I felt bad for a little bit. Where was your Hogwarts letter? Ah, it got lost in the mail <laughs> because of terrorism. Because they thought it was anthrax. I shouldn't make jokes like that. I can't help it. Uh, um, so I, I feel like um, this is kind of what we want this to be, what we want the Drunk Drawer Show to be, and that's kind of where the name comes from. Um, what What kind of things would you like to... To talk about you know what kind of things are you excited to get to in future podcasts oh me yes i thought you were topics. asking the audience no um, i mean for you that they will be asked later we don't care yeah about them. yeah whatever fuck you guys <laughs> uh i don't know i like i want to talk about movies i like talking about more pop culture stuff at, at certain points but i think a lot of it will just be whatever happens in the world and kind of jumping off that like i know i'm very interested in how the mind works like psychology, philosophy type things. Yeah. So I'd love to get into that at some point, but I also know that's a little heady. It gets it gets a little like crazy cerebral at some points. Yeah, when they're talking about how you know ions fire and the and it's like oh, yeah words that I don't <laughs> I don't know I can't spell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know these words. Siri, how do you spell? Like it's it's not good. Australopithecus. Be. Oh no, onomatopoeia. That's not a brain thing. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I'm excited if, for stuff like that. I'm excited to have um, you know you have a lot of friends that we will hopefully be getting to to speak to and get mm -hmm. people be get you know get to know to a a, a degree um i mean i think I'm, I'm excited to get to our our first episode which I'm, I'm i think we should plug here yeah uh, episode one we're gonna hopefully be bringing in tyler and uh we want to hit on what i've i think we've deemed as the big three mm -hmm. um we want to talk about you know the election and how everyone kind of feels about that um and just as a as a precursor, how do you feel about the election and what's happening in, in America today? Oh boy, I mean that's just, no, I mean that that's really the best way I can describe it. Yeah, is there's there's so much uh, misinformation, and there's so many things that seem unbelievable, but you know, are real. That I I, st I feel like I'm still processing everything. Like so much is coming in it's hard for me to formulate a, a concrete opinion and say, this is this way. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of, it, it's almost disingenuous to be, to say like, I know that this is how things are. Like it's, no yeah. one really knows. And it's, I, I agree with you. And, and with the misinformation, it takes more time to kind of differentiate between what is fact and what is uh, opinionated fact mm -hmm. you know like you can say it's it's all about I, I think of it like a sentence where you stress where you stress a different word and it has a different meaning mm -hmm. or forget a comma and it means something completely different right I, I feel like that's kind of where we are in with news in today's day and age yeah I'd agree with that um so that's going to be one of the first things we talk about um another thing we're going to talk about is uh again of the big three is the uh is the pope I don't know how how religious you are. What did you did you grow up in a religious household? Did you yeah, I was raised Christian. Um, kind of just fell off of it. I'm not a huge church goer. Yeah, like I like a lot of the ideals behind it, um, but like the deity kind of thing you, you like, or the, or the belief, or what that there's a higher power. Uh, I, so I like the idea that there's a higher power, but that doesn't mean that I believe there is. Um, but then it also comes down to how do you define higher power? Is yeah. it a like a is it a person, or are we just talking about the interconnectedness of people, like as an entity? What so, do you what where do you lean in that? I lean that if you're talking about God as a personification of just the universe, an then, all encompassing one. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah, I get that because there there are a lot of things that we don't know, can't explain, and there's like connections that you have with people that are outside of science um and or maybe we just haven't figured it out yet you know they, they say that uh or i've heard that magic is just science that hasn't been figured out yet yeah i love that line so i mean it's so it's so true yeah um well and then we're going to talk about you know our, our our new pope i was raised catholic so i've i've been on the pope-ness i know of popes you know <laughs> many popes uh, yeah 
uh, John Paul II, who, you know, I was too really, I was, I was too young to really grasp what he was, uh, but apparently was a fantastic Pope and an amazing Pope. Um, and then it went to, he was, he had a weird name. The I Chancellor. Don't what it is. He was a, he was German. He was German. I don't remember. He was Pope. Ooh. Sif? Maybe. Darth Sidious? Yeah, that one. Vader? Yeah. It was probably Vader. No, he, did, the, 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 when he, when, when he was toward the end of his, uh, papacy? Papacy? Uh, pa- yeah, papacy. When he was almost done being the Pope? <laughs> when he was almost unpoped. Yeah. <laughs> there were a bunch of, uh, memes going around comparing him to the Chancellor from the prequel. He definitely the prequel. looked like the Chancellor from, yeah. from Star Wars, for those of you that, that understand that reference, which is most of you, but not my girlfriend. Oh. If she's watching this, I hope she stared into your eyes. I hope right she there. did too, because there's there's nothing but upsetness. Yeah. I just got her to watch Jurassic Park, so we're we're chipping away. We're chipping away. Is that why you're wearing the shirt? That is, I mean, it was one of the reasons I bought the shirt. Yeah. She likes Jurassic Park, and I was like, if I wear it, she'll like me, right? That's not how it works. <laughs> That's not how that works. That's not how it works. Um, but yeah, we had uh, Benedict Benedict the Sixteenth, I believe, was his. Oh yeah. Was his name, his his papal name, mm-hmm. um, and now we have other guy whose name I can't remember, um, but he is our current pope, and I should probably have looked that up before we um, we started talking about this. The the dope but pope. The he's the dopest of the popes. Hey Jamie, look it up. <laughs> Jamie, uh, I'm Alex Jones. <laughs> uh, popes aren't real. Interdimensional lizard people <laughs> have infiltrated the Catholic Church. That sounds like something you would say. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys either. were. Uh, Josh had before we had started doing this. There's some background that goes with that. He had told me to listen to the Alex Jones, uh, Eddie Bravo, and Joe Rogan podcast, and I am about halfway through it, which means I'm about two hours in, and there's about two hours left, uh, and it gets a little insane. I would say absolutely listen to it. Um, not to plug other podcasts while we're doing ours. No, plug other podcasts. Yeah, all I, about sharing. I mean, and this is definitely an underlying uh, thing to what Philip DeFranco is currently doing. And if you guys don't know who Philip DeFranco is, please check him out. Not that he needs more money or views or anything, but I believe in what that man's doing and in, in creating an unbiased, you know, just factual news network mm-hmm. being, you know, un, unpaid for, you know, um, like obviously Fox leans a little more conservative, so they're paid to be conservative. And yeah. They'll give a conservative story and, you know, NBC, CBS, all the other, basically all the other networks. Right. <laughs> lean liberal and, and they'll give a liberal view and, and he's kind of going for that down the middle. Here's facts. Mm-hmm. You know? While still giving his opinion too. Yeah. And I like that his, he doesn't throw his opinion down your throat. He's like, this is what I think. What do you think? Yeah. And that's kind of what I want this to be. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're also going to, we're getting completely, we're going like this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're going to talk about the, the Pope and where he's at and, and how he's kind of embraced the, you know, homosexuality and how that's now a, a thing that, that, you know, it's, it's a thing. Like whether it's good, bad, sends you to hell, heaven, whatever, purgatory, whatever it is, he, he accepts it and i feel like he accepts everyone which is what i think the church is supposed to be right but i feel like they do exclude that they're more doom and gloom you know typically especially the catholic church yeah the catholic Catholic's always been a bit more it's bad. yeah it's, it's, bad. it's doom because they, they don't have the new testament right that's what no. or is that that's, Judaism. that's some, yeah that's something else yeah we, we do have the new testament i just remember when i was young i would go to church because my mom would make me and that is no that is not a joke that is real classic Thanks, yeah um she made us go to church and, the, and when the da vinci code came out the catholic church was up in arms really they, oh my god there was a oh my god this is me being a catholic <laughs> um it was one of our uh our priests was talking to us about the da vinci code and how no one should go see it nobody should read it and me as a kid i was like i'm gonna read it and then i did yeah. and um i saw the movie too and uh it was just because of all the 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 symbols and all of the the mythology behind it they were like oh this is a disgrace to the church and they're trying to, to soil the name of the church and da, da, da. and when you get more into it and like you read angels and demons which is the prequel to that mm-hmm. you find out that there's a pope molest or a, a, a catholic priest molesting someone and it's there's having sex and it's it's re- it makes the church look really bad but yeah to be fair the church makes the church look really bad yeah the, it none of it is uh unfounded no it's the best way there's there's definitely 
you know, like, like we said about Alex Jones, and I'm, I feel like this is the first thing I'm ever going to say on this podcast is going to get some shit. But um, there is a nugget of truth in some of the things that he says. It's mm-hmm. not in everything, but in some of the things he says, there is a, a nugget of truth, and, and you just have to find it. You have yeah. to get around all the pomp and circumstance mm-hmm. to get to the nugget. Um, and then the last thing I, I think we'll talk about in that, that first episode, which is, you know, I'm excited to hear your viewpoints as someone that's not as sporty, mm-hmm. but is more business savvy than myself by a large margin, um, is, is NBA player and professional sports salaries. And you kind of gave me a, a different, you know, I'll ask you to, to, to make the point you made to me originally. And, um, you know, just to kind of leave our three viewers that are going to watch this with that nugget into the next week to kind of let it simmer and think about. Yeah. So you made a point to me and uh, I'll ask you to remake it. Yeah. My, my initial, cause I, I am not huge into sports. I like them enough, but I'm not, I don't know names. I don't care, but I know how to play them. Sports. Sports. Um, but my thought with, with the money is if someone's bringing in that much money, why would you not, why would the player not, request that much and why would the owner or whatever not be willing to pay that if they're bringing in a million dollars and they ask for seven hundred and fifty thousand, you're still making a lot so the where that falls apart for me is the uh college sports because and this is the point you brought up but the uh NCAA. the yeah the ncaa video games like they don't make any money off that nothing don't so, see a dime yeah which is less about player salaries and more just about Treating if, people like yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna make money off of someone, then they should be at least entitled to. And I know that there's the argument that they get a free education, but at what point is that? You know, when when for example, NBA players only have to do one year of college before they declare for the draft. Mm-hmm. So if they are making money off of that player for that one year, they're selling you know Lonzo Ball UCLA jerseys and stuff, and he's you know in the NBA now, so now he's going to make jer- money off those jersey sales why doesn't he get to make it from college? Because he's still Alonzo Ball. He's still, right. you know, and he, yes, he did get a, a free ride and he decided to forego that to go make actual money. But mm-hmm. maybe if you gave him some money, he would be more willing to to kind of continue his. Yeah. Do you think that that would make a difference in, in the landscape? Yeah, and I've definitely, I know I have heard arguments for why they shouldn't get paid still, and I can't remember what they are. Um but I don't. I, I feel like if there was some way to, it, it's weird because then you're treating them like a like a kid, where you have uh, an account that they're making money and it's going into, but they don't get until they complete their college degree or something like that. Because otherwise, it's just you. You really are just stealing money from them. Yeah. In something that they earned, they did the work, and yeah, there's work, there's overhead, there's management work, there's uh, promotion work, and those sort of things, but. They're getting paid. No, I, I I mean, there's there's a lot to be said about that. And yeah. I, I'm excited to get, you know, episode one where we'll hopefully, like I said, bring in your friend Tyler and get to talk about all things political, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit of religion. Two things my dad told me never to talk about growing up. I'm going to talk about literally first. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, more about these player salaries and, and kind of a breakdown from from sport to sport. And, and you know, uh, I have some points that friends have made to me about stuff like this, and I'm excited to get into it. But this is uh this was just kind of our introductory one. Um, it's a way for us to test out our camera and recording settings because, yes. as you can see, we're just using uh, iPod headphones recording on our phones. It's not great. It's not. It's not the worst. It's not. It's, the not, worst. it's not great. It's not the worst, but it's but, not the worst. Yeah, <laughs> we are constricted to what how far this will go, and that's literally it. Yeah. So, but um, no, I mean, I'm I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited to to go on the journey with you know, our viewers and, and with you. And I, mm-hmm. I really am excited to see what we can do. And, and like I said, you know, at stealing a line from Philip DeFranco, we just want to create a conversation. We want to start a conversation and, and, you know, I would love to, to be able to respond to, to, you know, fans that we hopefully develop on social media. And I'd love, you know, I hope you guys like and follow and subscribe to all of the stuff that we will eventually have set up, um, which will hopefully be by the time this drops. Um, but you know, um, I love talking to Josh and that's why I've kind of reached out to you uh, <laughs> about doing this with me because I, I think you're very well versed in a lot of different things and uh, it, it could definitely be a learning experience moving forward. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, on top of just having a new creative outlet, um, 
this is an incentive to become more deeply educated in different topics. Like, cause I'm going to do research before we do the like next episode yeah. of the sport, uh, like sports and the Pope. Cause I don't know hardly anything about either of those things. I don't even know the Pope's name. Pope, Pope McPope person. Pope, Pope, Popey. Hey, it's me. Pope McPopeson. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna definitely know the Pope's name next time. I got yeah. Benedict the Sixteenth, and I feel like I deserve a little bit of credit for that. Like I yeah. didn't think that was gonna. Come I honestly to me. don't know if you're right, but I don't know enough to dispute it. So fair. You're so smart. Fair. Props to me. This is me. Just doing one of these guys. Um, but yeah, I think that that's gonna be it. Um, I just want to let you guys know a quick reminder: we're going to be doing this uh, bi-weekly. This will be something that we try to get up bi-weekly, and if it's if it ends up catching a little bit of fire. And we can, you know, make it work in in a week. I think that that's a goal that we have for ourselves. And if it even catches fire after that, I mean, we'll have to uh, be making some money at that point to yeah. be able to produce content that quickly. But I, you know, I'd love to be able to do something three days a week. Or I don't, I don't know how you feel about that because if you, we can do it, yeah, you also do um, business things, coding, programming, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a plug for Josh too. If you need anything coded or or anything like that, given money. All of it. Money, um, please. M- money, please. It's just better to give her the money. <laughs> Parks and Recs. Um, but yeah, we'll do this bi-weekly. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys come and uh, come and see me at Trivia. I'm at uh, Tasty Trivia, so come and see me, hang out. And uh, we will be back with the Junk Drawer Show, hopefully uh, next in two weeks. Next week, Yay! two weeks. Yay! Be good, guys. Your low battery kicked on.